name's Maureen Sigrou and um, I now do textile work. I'm a graduate of Emily Carr in printmaking on paper and also have done a lot of other courses and um, two years at Concordia in the surface design program. So I have a lot of background with printmaking and um, I, my passion is cloth. So I work with cloth and try to combine printmaking and love of colour and design to make art objects that are useful. And these cushions I call art to lean on. So then my, I do small editions of art cushions that people can beautify their living rooms with, hopefully. And I also do wall pieces. I do a lot of dyeing and experimenting and trying out new processes. I just try to keep it sort of to look at the small things, focus in on the small things that so slow down. My day job, I'm a cook, I'm a trained chef, and I really love the slow food movement. I work in film catering, so I work in the film industry and have done for about 20 years. So mobile catering, charging around the city in a truck and then pulling up and cooking food for people and then disappearing. <laughs> It's an adventurous job, it's exhausting and that, but you know, it has helped us to, and my partner is in the film industry as well as a set painter. This is my studio here, my current studio. I have had other studios. I had a studio down near Woodwards on Abbott Street in the old health unit building for years. And it was 500 square feet and it was affordable. And that went the way of the dodo bird. And um, you know, now I work in, in my own house so that I can afford to pay my mortgage and have a studio at the same time. So we made our house work for us in that way and built another studio in the back for my partner Leonard. So he paints there and I work here and for now that's working for us. I need running water. I, we installed a, a sink there. It's a kitchen sink. We had it kind of altered and then we had it installed. So I need running water. That's a primary requirement for me because I do a lot of dyeing and washing things out. Um, you need light, you need room, you need, I have my table, my table, I need a big flat surface. I mean, other textile people I know usually have twice this amount of table space if you want to do yardage or anything, but I'm limited, I can only do small things because I don't have the space. This is a Strathcona Heritage House, it's 100 years old. Um, we've renovated, done a lot of work, fixed it up, and made it into our home. It's, um, but it, you know, it's a house. It isn't really, it wasn't really supposed to be a studio inside here, but we took a wall out and we've made it work for us that way. But, you know, I mean, it may be that we will move out of town so that we can have more space or just join the crowds who are voting with their feet because of the way things are in Vancouver now. Some people I know have gone to the Sunshine Coast, other people I know have gone to places where they've got the space, but they're in isolation as far as community goes. You know, around here, you can't walk five yards without bumping into somebody, and it's probably an artist and somebody you've known for a long time, and you need that kind of community. Most people can't live in a place and pay a high rent or pay their mortgage and pay market rent for a studio. You just, a lot of... Some people can do it, but then you don't have any money for anything else or you're living so on the edge that you're poverty stricken. And then, you know, you would have to sell a lot of your work. You'd have to be selling like a business. And then that would um, eliminate the experimental time. I mean, I personally know that when I'm gearing up for the crawl, I'm not really thinking experimental. I'm thinking you know, making, I'm making things to sell because I really need to be able to sell some stuff. And then I somehow have to build in the experimental time at the beginning of the year when it's far away from when I want to be selling. But people need to be able to afford these spaces that they are talking about. There are role models in other cities. Plenty of cities around the world have done this and they've created affordable, very important, artist spaces um, or even artist areas. There's an area in Barcelona like that, Paris. A lot of the buildings have built-in artist studios, designated ones. There's a lot of them. 
um, a lot of places have, New Zealand has tons of artist spaces. Australia, there's artists everywhere and there seems to be affordable spaces there. Um, they, they have to make it affordable, otherwise people will leave and I know people who've left. People will go where it's cheaper. And, you know, that, we don't want that. We don't want all the good people to leave. I mean, Vancouver still is jam-packed full of arts events and festivals and all kinds of things. And we want that to continue.